Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. One of the distinctive doctrines of the Oneness Pentecostal movement, of course, is baptism in the name of Jesus, whereas other Christian groups usually baptize their converts in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Apostolic Pentecostals baptize exclusively in the name of Jesus Christ. We have often been referred to as Jesus name Pentecostals or even the Jesus only movement. Why do Pentecostals place so much emphasis on the name of Jesus, specifically oneness Pentecostals? From a biblical perspective, why is the name of Jesus so important? The short answer is the name of God is a very important theme throughout the Bible, and the name of Jesus is featured as the name of salvation in the New Testament. So let me give you a couple resources. If you're interested, I have a a small book that's entirely devoted to the subject called In the Name of Jesus. And then if you want to discuss more about water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, my book, The New Birth, goes into that subject. Now, I'm not going to go specifically into that aspect, but let's focus specifically on the significance of the name. If you study the Bible, uh, names are very significant, and particularly the name of God. Actually, there, there's a fourfold significance. God's name represents, first of all, his character, his identity, what kind of of person he is or what kind of God he is. So in other words, by knowing his name, you have an understanding of his character, his nature, his attributes. The second thing, God's name represents his authority. Third, God's name represents his power. And fourth, God's name represents his manifested glory or his immediate presence. So what makes the name of God different from all other names? If you call my name, I may or may not hear you. I may or not be may or may not be there. I may or may not want to help you if you're asking for help. Or even if I want to, I may not have the power or authority to do anything. But what's different about God's name, specifically the name of Jesus, when you call his name anywhere in the world, you have his immediate attention and presence. You have a God who wants to help, who has the power to help, and who has the authority to help. So his name represents his presence throughout the earth. Um, And so God's name identifies who he is. Now, the name of Jesus is significant. And let me back up. In the Old Testament, the personal name by which God was identified, in contrast to all the false gods, was what we call in in the King James Version, Jehovah, or probably more accurately in Hebrew was pronounced Yahweh. Now, ancient Hebrew didn't have vowels, so we don't know the exact ancient pronunciation, but the consonants Y-H-W-H, um, also called the Tetragrammaton, the four sacred letters, which, as we say, Yahweh. So the word God, or Elohim in Greek, could be applied to true gods, false god, even humans in certain capacities. Uh, so it's like the English word, generic God. Uh, But when you say Yahweh, that is the one true God of the Bible, the God of Israel, the God of creation. So that was God's personal name that distinguished him from all other so-called gods. The name of Jesus literally means Yahweh Savior or Yahweh is salvation. And the uniqueness about the name of Jesus is that Uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the only person who actually embodies or personifies the meaning of that name. Now, other people in history, so even in its equivalent to the name Joshua, uh, and in in the New Testament, we find other people who are named Jesus, Bar Jesus, um, even today, especially in the Hispanic community, Jesus. So many people can bear that name, But when they bear the name, it's a way of glorifying God to say, God is our Savior, Yahweh is our Savior. But in the case of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it has a very specific 
fulfillment that he actually is what his name says in contrast to anybody else. We see this in Matthew chapter one, when the angel spoke to Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and, and said, call his name Jesus. In Matt, so this was God's choice. Matthew 1, 21 through 23, it quotes from Isaiah, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, you will call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted from the Hebrew is God with us. And then this is applied to Jesus. He will be the fulfillment of this prophecy. He will be the son born of a virgin who will be Emmanuel, God with us. So call his name Jesus. And then there's the explanation why. For he shall save his people from their sins. So if you don't know the meaning of the name of Jesus, it doesn't make sense. But if you know the meaning is the name Jesus is Jehovah Savior or Yahweh Savior. Oh, so that's why he should be called that name because he's going to do that. And so now you see the parallel, God with us, the name Jesus actually fulfills that prophecy because God is Jehovah and God is with us. Why is he with us? To be our savior. So the name Jesus actually fulfills the prophecy that the Messiah would be God with us to save us from our sins. And so we have this classic statement in Acts chapter 4. So if you go back to Acts 3, uh, Peter and John prayed for a lame, lame man. He was miraculously healed. They actually said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I might say, we typically use the title Lord or the title Christ or maybe even of Nazareth. Why? Because as I said, there, there are other people throughout history and even today who are known by the name of Jesus, but there only, there's only one who actually fulfills the meaning. Well, how do you identify that one? When you say Lord Jesus or Jesus Christ or Lord Jesus Christ, now you're exclusively identifying that one. So the name is Jesus, but the titles identify the unique Jesus who is the object of your faith who is actually God manifest in flesh, who is your savior. And so they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So the lame man was healed. Crowd gathered, they marveled. They thought, wow, Peter and John have such extraordinary power. They must be holy men of God. And so Peter explained, you know, why do you look on us as if we had extraordinary power of holiness? It's our holiness. It's not us. Acts 3.16 says, his name through faith in his name, has made this man whole. So it's the name of Jesus. But notice, it's not merely the mechanical pronunciation. It's not a magical formula. When we say the name, it's only effective because we have faith in the one the name represents. So it's the name of Jesus that heals, but it's because we call his name in faith, knowing who he is, having a relationship with him, relying upon him as the savior and healer, so that's how he was healed, through the invocation of the name of Jesus in faith. So in Acts 4, Peter and John were arrested, called before the Jewish council, and they were threatened, you know, you shouldn't be preaching Jesus. But they asked, how were you able to do this miracle? Well, in Acts 4.10, Peter quoted the exact words by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then in verse 12, he explained, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So you want to know why do we emphasize the name of Jesus? Because the New Testament, especially the apostles, said it's specifically the name of Jesus that's the only name for salvation. And if you read the book of Acts, they baptized in Jesus' name. They laid hands on the sick and prayed for healing in Jesus' name. They cast out demons in Jesus' name. They preached and taught in Jesus' name. They suffered, suffered shame and rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. And, and as Colossians 3.17, the apostle Paul said, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and of course, in doing so, you're giving honor and thanks to God the Father, because God has chosen to reveal himself in the name of Jesus. And so, of course, doing all in the name of Jesus is, goes beyond just a verbal invocation. It means all of our life should be subject to Jesus as Lord. But when there is a time to invoke God's name or to act in God's name or a ceremony such as water baptism uh, where we need to call on God, then it's obvious 
do it in the name of Jesus. And that's why we emphasize it, because the New Testament tells us whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for listening to this episode of Apostolic Life in the 21st Century. If you enjoy this podcast, please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. We also appreciate it when you share Apostolic Life in the 21st Century with a friend or family member. Finally, join us again next time as we look at how the Bible applies to everyday life.